The number of children in Japan has dropped for 40 years. Some experts say it's because fewer people are dating and getting married. But there may be a different explanation. Oh god, they're turning their children into stone. When you walk around Japan, or if you're a real Japan lover, use Google Street View to walk around Japan, you may see these cute little statues. You can find them on roadsides, in temples, or near cemeteries. What are they, and why haven't their parents come to pick them up? They're called Ochizo-sama because they represent the Buddhist god Jizo. Technically he's not a god, but a bodhisattva. A bodhisattva is someone who was just about to achieve nirvana and become a Buddha, but chose not to do it yet in order to hang out with the normies and help guide people towards enlightenment. A bodhisattva is like a person who's been waiting outside a public restroom in agony, and just when it becomes available, he lets another person through. Truly a being of infinite compassion. Whenever you really need to pee, you should pray that Jizo is standing outside the restroom. Bodhisattvas have magical powers and people worship them just like gods in other religions. The main difference between bodhisattvas and gods is that serious Buddhists will teach you great suffering if you call bodhisattvas gods. Other than that, they're about the same. Naraga Jizo is one of the main A-list bodhisattvas among the most popular and beloved Buddhist figures in Japan, right below Krillin. Long ago, he vowed to delay his Buddhahood until hell is empty. He would prevent people from being trapped in hell by teaching them all to become good, enlightened beings, which means that I'm guaranteed to become a Buddha before he does. Nara Buddha Jizo is seen as the guardian of souls in the Buddhist hells. He's also the protector of travelers and children. Jizo became a popular figure in the late Heian period. People thought they were living in the age of Mappo, a time of chaos where Buddha's teachings lose their power and people become degenerates, just warring and whoring all over the place. Enlightenment was nigh impossible in that age. It's hard to find the Buddha's path between a hooker's boobs. The late Heian was a time of famine and civil war, so people must have really thought it was the end times. Writers wrote about death, artists made paintings of hell, and the movie Grave of the Fireflies was created. Art was very gloomy. People looked to Jizo for hope. Hell was his domain. He was supposed to ease your suffering and help you get out of hell. Look, he's right there in front of the restroom. Women especially had the hots for Jizo. If it was hard for men to reach salvation in the age of Mappo, then it was impossible for women because of the monthly blood pipe leaks, probably. Feminism wasn't exactly a Buddhist virtue. When Buddhism came to Japan, it merged with local religious beliefs. Pretty smart of them. Merging with local beliefs is one of the best ways to spread religion right below murder. Jizo happened to take on the powers and responsibilities of native fertility gods and grew in popularity among women because he became the protector of children and the unborn. That's one way to become popular with women. Good job. A Jizo cult formed in the later Heian period among commoners and people who were shit on by society, like the sick, the poor, and women. They saw Jizo as a compassionate god. Over time, people gave him more powers of compassion. They prayed to Jizo for easy childbirth, healing, and long life. People did rituals for Jizo to protect mothers during childbirth, to calm the dead spirits of wars and natural disasters, and to make rain. The Jizo cult spread across Japan thanks to women, especially women who dabbled in the spiritual arts, like fortune tellers, ritual performers, and nuns. According to some religious texts in a few of Jizo's past lives, Jizo was a woman who saved her mother from hell. Women were like, wow, religious stories about us that are not just warnings about the evils of the cooch? Count me in. Over time, Jizo's looks in art became more friendly and motherly. Then came the super cute child monk look. Jizo protects the souls of dead children, including stillborn, miscarried, or aborted children. Sometimes you'll see these statues in groups of six. It's because of the Buddhist belief that beings are born into one of six paths, or six states of existence. There's one statue for each path, because Jizo protects the souls of the beings in all six paths. You'll often see him holding a staff with six rings, one ring per path. In Naruto, the Sage of the Six Paths also carries a six-ringed staff. In My Neighbor Totoro, you can see six giant Jizo statues in the background, there. Near Jizo statues, you may see little ant skyscrapers dotting the landscape. 
Why are they there? Because of little baby souls. In Buddhist lore, when you die, you have to cross the Sanzu River into the afterlife. Jizo guides the innocent souls across a bridge to the other side, but the guilty must swim. Now, when children die, obviously children are innocent, so they get to cross the bridge with Daddy Jizo, right? Not so fast, little brat. No, most young children are guilty, because most of them die before their parents. They're guilty of causing their parents pain and suffering, selfish bebes. They also haven't had enough time to do good deeds and gain merit. In fact, they probably have a long list of bad deeds, like drawing on the wall, or telling mommy that daddy was wrestling with the babysitter. You can't trust babies. The children can try to swim across, but they have short arms and a terrible sense of distance, so they would never make it. Their souls are trapped on the wrong side. That's why this side of the Sanzu River is called Children's Limbo. Every day, the children are forced to stack stones into these little towers to atone for their sins, build enough towers, and they would gain enough merit to cross the river. That's why you see the little stone towers around Jizo statues, because people walking by stop and make them to help out the little babies. So next time you see a Jizo statue, take a few minutes to stack some stones. Or knock them down. That's what you get for telling mommy, Allison. Unfortunately, the children in children's limbo would soon learn an important lesson. Life isn't fair, and neither is the afterlife. They would build the rock piles every day, but every evening these demon bullies show up to knock over the rocks and yell at them. The demons would also try to hurt the children, but Jizo would protect them. Some say that instead of demons, wind and flames arrive every evening to scatter the rocks and burn the children into bones, but Jizo revives them afterwards. Parents made statues for their lost children and prayed to Jizo to bring their children's souls across the river. Parents could also pay monks to do ceremonies for their kids. Today, parents buy Jizo statues or figurines from temples after a miscarriage or the death of a child, and monks are happy to sell them. They're like, oh, I'm sorry for your loss. Consider buying this if you don't want your child's soul to suffer for all eternity. Some parents today still find comfort in their Jizo statues after losing a child. Some parents also build stone piles to help their child in the afterlife. You'll often see Jizo statues with red bibs and beanies. No one's sure how that tradition started or what it means, but that doesn't stop people from guessing. Maybe it's because children often wore red in old artwork of children's limbo. Maybe it symbolizes menstrual blood. Maybe because red is traditionally a color that fights off demons and disease. Or maybe it just makes them look adorable. For more videos, check these out. We have some new patrons this week, Michael Guzzetti, Kristen, DSTAR219, Marina Simarusti, John G, and Joanna Lee Gilbert. Thanks so much, you guys. All right, I love you, and spread the knowledge. What kind of pizzas do Buddhist monks like? Jizo pepperoni.